not talking about your usual Monopoly or Scrabble here. No, no, no. These games are in a league of their own. My name is AJ with Most Amazing, and these are the top 10 cursed paranormal games humans were never meant to play. At number 10 is the Bath Game, also known as Daruma San. Formerly known by the name of the spirit that you're about to invite to haunt you, this game can be genuinely lethal, so please tread carefully. But hey, at least you get to have a nice bath for this one. I mean, mostly nice. And yes, you're going to need a tub for this to work. You're gonna want to start this game before you hit the hay tonight. So before bed, fill up your tub and get stark naked before cutting out the lights. Now be super careful as you enter your bathtub in the dark because you definitely don't want to share the same fate as the ghost you're about to summon. As you sit in the tub while facing your faucet, close your eyes and keep them shut. And as you wash your hair or massage your scalp if you're bald I guess, you repeat the words Daruma San fell down over and over again until you're finished washing your head. As you chant, you'll imagine a Japanese woman standing in the bathtub, slipping and falling onto a rusty tap which directly impales through her eye, her body going lifelessly limp moments later. As you do this, you'll either hear a sound coming from behind you or feel movement in the water, indicating that you've successfully summoned the ghost. Great. Now, keeping your eyes shut, carefully get out of the bathtub without slipping, leave the bathtub filled till morning, dry yourself off, and close the bathroom door behind you as you leave. Go right to bed without turning any lights on. When you wake up in the morning, the game will begin. As you go about your day, you'll get to feel the presence of the one-eyed woman creeping up behind you, disappearing whenever you turn around. She'll get closer and closer as your day goes on, and do not let her catch you. If the one-eyed woman is getting too close, you're gonna stop Tomer, which means stop, and then run away really fast. Fast, which should end the game and the woman will leave you alone. If that doesn't work, try shouting Kita while swinging your hand in a chopping motion. Now you must end this game before midnight or else she will keep stalking you and appear in your dreams to take your life like Freddy Krueger. And number nine is the closet game. I can assure you that there aren't any monsters hiding in your closet. Well, at least not until you play this game, that is. The risks associated with this game involve being possessed by a demon and or being dragged immediately into hell. So... Don't say I didn't warn you. All you need is a match and maybe a friend if you ain't brave enough. All you need to do is turn out the lights, hang out in your closet, and chant the words, show me the light or leave me in darkness. Now, eventually you should hear some demonic whispering, probably something along the lines of surprise, mother effort. When you hear the whisper or anything at all for that matter, you must immediately light your match and hightail it out of the closet. If your match stick happens to break before you can strike it, or if it doesn't light after the first couple of tries, it's safe to say that you can kiss your pretty soul goodbye. Bye. But if you do manage to light it and leave in time, congratulations, a demon now haunts your closet. Great. From now on, always open that closet with light on unless you want to meet your demonic tenant. On second thought, you might as well just board the closet shut. Not unless you'd rather risk leaving the door cracked open for a demon to come out and suck the soul out of you while you sleep. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. Coming in at number eight is the elevator ritual. Have you ever wanted to visit an unholy alternate reality? Well, now you can. For this one, you're gonna need an elevator with at least 10 floors, and if you got any, bring any friends who are just as crazy as you are. Get in the elevator and start visiting floors. The sequence is four, then two, then six, then two, then 10, then five, and then 10 again. If any random pedestrian enters or leaves the elevator during the sequence, you've got to start all over again. If you've done it correctly, a ghastly woman should enter the elevator once you stop at the fifth floor. Now, it's crucial that you do not pay this woman no mind. Don't greet her, don't glance her way, don't even acknowledge her existence whatsoever, because if you do, you could kiss your home dimension goodbye. Now, when you reach the tenth floor, you'll notice that everything should be different than when the doors opened the first time. This is your last chance to forfeit the ritual and turn back, returning to the first floor, because otherwise, you can step out into this parallel plane. Now, ignore the woman if she asks where you're going, and feel free to roam around and explore this new world, if you dare. Now, in order to return, you must get in the exact same elevator you started in, but getting back to this elevator may be more difficult than it seems, as you may become disorientated and forget which elevator you arrived in, or the elevator may seem to get further and further away from you as you walk towards it, and so on and so forth. Be vigilant and keep your wits about you. If at any point during the ritual you faint or pass out, or otherwise lose consciousness, you will likely awake in your own home. However, be sure to carefully examine your surroundings upon waking as the home to which you have been returned to may not be the one you started out in. At number seven, the 11 miles of hell. Just an 11 mile drive through the woods at night. And at the end of your trip, you get a wish granted. So long as you endure the horrors and don't perish along
on your way. How bad could it be? Let's find out. Before you get in your car, fixate on what you desire most in life. Then head out alone at night and drive around till you find the 11 mile road. You'll know it's the right one as it'll lead into the woods, it'll appear on your right, and it will have a single lamp post illuminating the entry. Now don't worry, if you really want to find it, you will. So you're going to be cruising along following these bizarre rules on this empty road. Once you found the road, turn off your radio, and now you're committed, so don't even try to go back as it will end horrifically for you. Now the chilling part about this game is that each mile amps up the horror. In the first mile, it gets strikingly cold, and you have the option to turn on your heater or keep it off, but it's highly recommended you turn it on. By the second mile, if you still haven't turned on your heater, do it or you're probably gonna freeze to death. At the third mile, ignore all the shadows in the trees, no matter how human they may seem or how distracting they are. In the fourth, ignore all voices coming from outside your car, no matter how human they may seem or how convincing they are. By the fifth, ignore the vanishing of both the trees around you and the environment as you enter this liminal space. In the sixth, your radio will turn on. Do not turn it off and ignore it as best you can. In the seventh mile, continue ignoring all the voices, especially if they're coming from your back seat. In the eighth, your headlights may start to flicker, and if it does, don't try to fix the flickering headlights and ignore it and keep moving forward. By the ninth mile, your vehicle is probably going to stall, and when you roll to a stop, close your eyes as hard as you can and keep facing forward. Try to start your car back up without opening your freaking eyes no matter what. When your start backs up again, open your eyes and keep rolling forward. In the tenth mile, under any circumstances, do not look in the rearview mirror unless you want to face certain death. In the eleventh mile, this is the final mile, if you've reached it this far, you're unlike most people and you are probably have extreme luck and you probably possess no fear. Your vehicle may lose power but continue to move and if this happens and normally I would never advise you do this but don't open your damn eyes for the love of God and all things holy no matter what voices you hear in your head no matter how hot or cold it is do not open your damn eyes when the power of your car returns you may open your eyes and you're probably gonna see some old-fashioned buildings and a brick wall to prevent you from going ahead stop your car and when you exit you're gonna find yourself miraculously parked in your driveway if you wish for something physical check your trunk or back seat and if not wait up to 30 days for your wish to come true I know Number six is the devil face. For this one, you gather 12 black candles, which let's be real, isn't something most people have lying around, so you're probably gonna have to hit up the store for those. Then you head to a dark bathroom just before the clock strikes midnight. Now you light those candles, shut your eyes, and wait for the witching hour. When the clock strikes 12, open your eyes, and expecting to see your reflection, instead you will see the devil himself. Now this is a solo game, so if you decide to bring a friend along for the ride, it's likely you or your homie will succumb to demonic possession. Seriously guys, possession is no joke, so make sure you try this one alone. At number five is the midnight game. What better way to spend your evening than inviting a ghost into your home and having it chase you around the dark for three and a half hours? The setup, grab some paper, a pin, and get ready to shed a little bodily fluids. Don't worry, just a drop. You're gonna write your names, add a drop from your pricked finger, and place those papers by the front door. Unfortunately, your door needs to be made of wood for this to work, so if you're not a pioneer in a log cabin, then you're gonna have to sit this one out. Then knock on that door 22 times, with the last knock coming as the clock directly strikes midnight. Then blow out a candle, and boom, Congratulations, you've just summoned the Midnight Man. Now, the goal is simple, but quite nerve-wracking. Stay away from the Midnight Man until 3.33 a.m. This means wandering around with your candle, hoping not to encounter the ghostly being. And if your candle decides to snuff out, it's panic time, as you've got 10 seconds to light her back up. If you fail, you will be attacked by the Midnight Man, who will make you hallucinate your worst fears until 3.33. Now, you won't actually be able to see the Midnight Man, but you can tell he's nearby if the room gets icy, your candle plays dead, or if you start hearing whispers in the dark. That's your cue to avoid a certain someone. At number four, Four is hide and go seek alone. Also known as one man hide and seek, this takes regular hide and seek to a whole new level of spookiness. Despite the title, you'll actually be playing this game with a doll that's supposedly possessed by a spirit. Great! So here's what you do. You're gonna start off innocently enough by tearing the stuffing out of the doll and replacing it with uncooked rice and one of your own fingernails. Then you dunk this unsettling creation in water. It could be a sink or bathtub, your choice. Next comes the really bizarre part. After you've had your turn seeking the doll, which shouldn't be too scary considering considering it's an inanimate object and you'll probably find it in the same spot you left it in, it's time to stab the doll, douse it in salt water, and let it do the seeking. And guess who's hiding? You. Good luck with that. At number three are the Three Kings. This game will allow you to access the Shadow Realm. Now, it's not a physical place that you can stroll into. It's more like a place which we've all been to before in your dreams that you can't quite remember. Now, there are a bunch of extensive steps to get this to work, and if you mess up, it could get real messy. First, you're gonna need to be stone cold sober to start, so don't get messed up on any substances or even booze. And if your life is going haywire or you're doing this to escape from reality, it's also a bad idea. Preparation is super key. 
you're gonna need the following. A large quiet room, preferably without windows, like a basement, or at least windows that can be covered up. A pack of candles, a bucket of water and a mug, a fan, two large mirrors, three chairs, and an alarm clock. An active fully charged cell phone and a small toy or object from your childhood. Yeah, this, this one needs a lot. Basically, you're gonna set the chair facing north, have the two chairs also facing north next to it, prop up a mirror on each side, put the water in front of you, and Sit around until you summon demons. Pretty fun. At number two is the Gallery of Henry Bouchamp. This one's here at number two because while it's the most interesting since you get to explore an art gallery made from bodily components of the artists, you will have to be at a specific bar in Paris. The exact bar is a mystery, so, so you're gonna have to go bar hopping till you find the right one. Now, if you find the right bar and if you play your cards right, you might get to see these paintings by this guy named Henry Bouchamp. But it's not as easy as just walking in. You gotta prove you're a big fan by ordering a special drink the right way and answering tricky questions. And if you mess up, apparently you get nightmares for days, which isn't fun. And don't even think about trying to cheat your way through either. Assuming you get past all of that, you'll finally get in to see the paintings, but you're, they're not your typical art. It's crazy stuff painted with all sorts of different bodily fluids apparently. Rumor has it that the artist went all out using his own body parts to create some of this freaky artwork. Now if you ever actually get to see it, let me know how it goes and I'll buy you a drink and you can spill all the details. At number one is Bloody Mary. This this game is undoubtedly the most well-known scary ritual, and it's also the simplest to perform. All you gotta do is chant Bloody Mary several times while looking at yourself in a mirror in a pitch black room, though some versions suggest doing it with a candle. The idea is that if you summon her, Bloody Mary will pop up in the mirror looking pretty terrifying, like a corpse, a witch, or a ghost even. I always imagined her kind of looking like the nun from the Conjuring movies. And the chilling part is that they say that she's not there to exchange pleasantries. No, no. She's gonna go all in trying to harm you in nasty ways, from strangling to stealing your soul or even gouging your eyeballs out. She's not here for a game of patty cake, y'all. This is a demon you're confronting. It's recommended that you try this with friends, so if things go south, at least you won't be facing your doom solo. But seriously, better to skip all these spirit games and just stick to safer pastimes. As always, if there's a game that humans weren't meant to play that you think I've missed, feel free to let me know down in the comments. This has been AJ with Most Amazing, and I'll catch you all in another video. Later.